Okay, let's talk about guillotine choke. Uh, there's about a million different ways to guillotine choke, but I'll just show the way that I prefer and kind of talk about the reasons why I prefer it that way. Uh, we won't really discuss uh, how to get someone's head low. Uh, we're just going to assume that he's dropped his head low. Maybe he's coming in for a tackle or what. But uh, let's just talk about uh, some important details here. And again, why I prefer to do guillotine this certain way as opposed to some different ways. So we'll switch sides here. So you can see from this angle first, uh, Chris has dropped his head low and my arms are both inside. Okay, there's different variations. This arm's outside, whatever it might be, but we're just gonna discuss when this arm is, when both of my arms are inside of his arms. Okay. So first thing here is I've got to dig this arm deep. And so just to exaggerate so you can see what I'm talking about here, I'm just gonna reach this arm towards the mat. Okay. Normally I would just shoot it through, okay, but just to exaggerate the movement, I'm shooting it to the mat just so you can get a better visual of what's going on here. I want the back of his neck in my armpit, okay? If there's space here, if I turn this way a little, if there's space in my armpit, um, one, I'm not digging my elbow deep, which I'll discuss later, but two, maybe you've seen this stuff happen. Okay, we squeeze so hard, his head pops out. Okay, so by closing that space off immediately, Okay, I'm locking his head in and securing his head better. Okay. The second thing this does, and the more important thing it does, is it drops my elbow low. Okay. I like to think of guillotine choke and rear naked choke as being almost the same choke. Okay. When we do a rear naked choke, my elbow should be in line with my opponent's chin. If it's offset, there's places for him to grab. He's gonna dig his fingers in those two holes and I'm never gonna get the choke. Even if he doesn't defend here, this is uh, more of a trachea crush and not a choke, okay? So the same thing applies to our guillotine choke here. If I don't dig this elbow deep, I'm just crushing his trachea. And then we get into this type of stuff where I'm trying to lift his head up off the ground to apply the pressure by pulling up this way, okay? So instead what I'm doing is I'm digging deep, aligning that elbow with his chin and creating a pinch on both sides of the neck, okay? For a true blood choke. So digging down deep, Elbow should be in line with the chin. You can see how I can punch over to that side to get a little more depth. This hand, if I'm deep enough, will oftentimes be sticking up right here, which makes it super easy to lock my grip, okay? If my elbow is not deep enough, my hand is under his shoulder and so now I have to dig here, okay? The issue with here is my hands are right there for his hands to grab, okay? Now I can no longer even get this guillotine, okay? So by digging deep, elbow comes in line with the chin, this hand shoots up high, okay? Now it's outside of his ability to grab. So I shoot that deep, hand comes immediately up. He tries to defend the grip here. There's nowhere to grab, okay? I can lock my hand with much less risk of him getting a hold of my wrists, of my hands, blocking my hands from gripping, okay? So I'm deep. This hand immediately comes up and I grab, okay? I always prefer to grab middle finger on the bend of my wrist, okay? I'm far out on my lever, but I still have a secure grip, okay? 
We don't want to grab hand to hand. There's just too much give there and it alleviates the choke quite a bit. So by grabbing it right at the end of the forearm, right on the wrist itself, it's secure, but I'm maximizing my own leverage here. Okay. So from this side, digging deep, elbow in line with the chin, hand is here, easy to grab. Okay. Once I have this secure, you can see this elbow is coming out. Okay. This prevents him from putting his arm over top of me for the guillotine defense. But the other thing it also does is allows me to lever off his shoulder. I'm creating the guillotine by pinching the wrist to the shoulder. That's where the choke comes into play. So I'm grabbing here and I'm pushing up. I'm pinching with my bicep and pushing up here. If I drive that elbow forward, it levers this hand up. We're creating leverage in several points. So this is the motion here, okay? You can see I'm not grabbing the wrist even. I'm creating a hook and I'm levering out of that hook. So this is the motion I prefer, okay? You can play with it and decide if you like it or not but it makes for a very tight guillotine with very little effort. And that's really the reason I like this guillotine is because it takes almost no energy, okay? Nothing's worse in my opinion than locking something in, a submission in, exerting all your energy on it, burning out just to have the guy get out and uh, pass your guard and beat you up. So, uh, Digging deep, key detail, elbow in line with the chin. Very important. This should put your hand up near his shoulder, okay? If you're shorter, maybe just your fingertips will point out, but it still makes it easier to grab. I'm just sneaking my hand in here, and it's a lot harder for him to block that grip from happening, okay? Elbow comes over. I pinch my wrist to my shoulder as I straighten out and walk my hips in. So the last part of this, once everything is in position, I'm just walking my hips in, walking my opponent to the wall, using my hips under my opponents. So one more time from this side, okay, digging deep, elbow in line with the chin, fingers pop out, middle finger on the bend of the wrist, Elbow comes over. I'm leveraging my wrist to my shoulder. Straighten my spine. Walk in. Okay, once without a body. Armpit to the back of the neck. Elbow digs deep. Fingers pop up. Middle finger to the bend of the wrist. Elbow comes over and drives forward. That levers this hand to the shoulder. See how tight that pinch is getting there. Bringing the wrist to the shoulder, okay? So to dig this deep, you can see I'm teapotting, okay? Lock everything in. The last part is to straighten back out and walk the hips in, okay? All together, full speedish. See, it takes almost no effort, no energy. I'm not burning myself out, very minimal effort. Uh, it's probably the, as far as guillotines go, it's the, the most energy efficient way I've found to do it. So, one more time here. It takes no arm strength. It's all in the leverage, all in the positioning, all in the posture. Okay. Standing guillotine.